What's up Hobby Maniacs, Rob Bear here today with another exciting hobby feature for you. This is Wednesday and we're going to call it Hobby Hump Day from now on because <laughs> it's the middle of the week. You start daydreaming about what you're going to work on for the weekend or maybe what you're working on right now in your Beats Laboratory, getting it all together, getting it ready for your big game this weekend. And well, hey, there's probably a lot of people going to be playing with these soon. And a little channel first we're gonna actually get to something that came out and show you how to put it together instead of kind of uh, playing more like hey what do I got on my table you know for commissions and things like that I had a little bit of free time to jump in here and do this tutorial because of all the great support from you guys over on patreon so keeping that in mind we got to do a little bit of paying the bills real quick <laughs> so I'd like to invite everybody to stay in the trenches <laughs> help support what we're doing here and keep these videos ad free by clicking on the patreon link and seeing what you can do to help support us and get free swag out of it at the same time make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel check out our blog spikybitsblog.com and head on over to the longwar.net that's the home of the battle reports for exclusive content early access videos and more like promotion codes that'll help you <laughs> help you save on things like this uh, become a veteran of the long war today so like I was saying really exciting kit this is kind of a first for us here on spiky bits we're actually able to jump in and work on something that just came out now what I like about this kit is that it does come with all three versions of the weapons. Unfortunately, you cannot magnetize them. You can't really make them that modular. I suppose you could do some wonkiness where you can magnetize the wrists here on these axes and then also have the option to have your storm shield and your, your hammer kind of right here as well. But uh, those are really small joints. You could do it. I'm not saying you can't. Uh, I'm just saying it would take a little bit of finesse work, so to speak, and then you're going to have these weird angles like you would have a storm shield, you would have a hammer up here or a storm shield like right here. So that being said, um, don't be afraid to attempt it. I am personally not going to do that on this tutorial. I am just going straight build. I'm going to show you how to do a thunder hammer and I'm going to show you how to do claws because that's what I'm doing for my build. I'm doing 10 men. We're only going to uh, work on one box today. I'm going to do two sets of claws and the rest are going to be hammers. So that's kind of what I'm feeling. I took Blood Angel Terminators in the past. I kind of feel like these guys are kind of like Blood Angel Terminators because they're about the same points, but they're way better stats. Extra wounds, crazy attacks on the charge, get to swing if they die, and maybe most importantly, they have feel no pain stock. So I am a firm supporter in, hey, I don't have to take a Sanguinary Priest now. And it confers to the whole squad, and if I throw another special character in there, well, hey, you know, it is what it is, but uh, we'll just get through it, right? So, really exciting kit. I can't wait to show you guys how to assemble the new Wolfen models. So here come the Wolfen. Let's do this thing. So first off, we check the instruction manual. On new kits, it is absolutely imperative that you check the instruction manual. I just pointed to the guy we're going to put together and what's really nice about this manual is the page on the left there shows you how to assemble it up to the point where you choose the weapon and then they give you three options of course for each weapon we're going to do thunder hammer storm shield of course <laughs> storm hander storm hammer thunder weapons shield man's wolf and craziness <laughs> these guys are just running amok it's it's so cool so i already went through and pre-cut down all the parts it's very important that you go through match up all your part numbers grab all the right parts because this kit is no joke there is uh each model has pieces all over the spruce so i spread them all out do a quick accounting to make sure they are all there and then i just grab the little skull pile at the bottom or a little rubble pile that the uh, legs lock into and uh just get ready to do that so very easy assembly uh it's the legs are two part left and right and one of them is going to attach to the base piece there and of course i'm using the testers plastic glue great stuff i love it kenny hates it i love it so you gotta split the middle there <laughs> go with your heart on this one folks uh so it's gonna attach to the base mount super easy right there and you see i'm just i'm basically just putting a little bit of glue a little bit of pressure and it almost is is tacky uh, nearly immediately and then each one of these left and right legs is going to attach at the waist and then it kind of and then the top 
uh, torso kind of forms this like assembly down over top of it with like the tabards and things like that. So kind of the days of these these old tabards that you put on the front are kind of gone and now they're just using all this um, CAD and three dimensional design to do slices and things like that. So just apply a little bit of glue, makes it super easy. The the left and right half lock together. Don't forget your little paw, <laughs> kind of doing the little paw and it just it just locks together and you form the leg assembly and now once you glue that in you truly appreciate how tall this model is going to be because these guys are terminator size but not terminator wide you know what i mean like they don't have that bulk or that girth <laughs> i can't help but giggle every time i say girth they don't have that girth but they have that height and they have that wild man kind of running stance you know so next up like i said is the left and right torso and you can see there where you got the back tabard and i'm carefully applying glue around the perimeter and there's a little notch in there too the two front halves notch together for this one i just kind of like um went the back piece first and kind of glued it onto the front because i kind of wanted to see how it all interfaced together this is kind of like a dry run for me but not really dry because i'm using glue see what i did there and so then i i hit up the the bottom or the front piece the front torso piece with of course a little uh groin cloth and things like that it locked together pretty well it went together uh super smooth there was a little bit of uh hesitation at first but then it locked together pretty well now and, and you notice there, I just uh, I just kind of uh, put my fingers together because I realized that I got a little too much glue on there. So I'm going to dab some glue off. Just a wet, damp paper towel uh, helps get that glue off because the problem is with plastic glue, if you get it on your fingers, you start putting your thumbprint and your fingerprint all over the model, and then you have to scrape it off, and, and nobody wants that. That's just stupid. So wanted to be cognizant of that for everybody uh, at home and make sure that I that I kind of grabbed it off there. Now we're going to do the arm weapons, which I already showed you. There is full on instructions for each set of weapons. This one is the Thunderhammer Storm Shield, of course. So the, what I really like about this is that there's left and right arms and they have the little power feeds that kind of go subdermally into the skin at the end but they all they lock into the backpack at the back now right here i realized oh hey i was a dummy as as much as i tried to read the instructions and things i forgot to put the groin or the uh the hamstring the hammy armor we'll call it hammy armor you, you always got to stretch you don't want to pull a hammy guys make sure you always stretch before you sit down and uh, do your hobby and uh <laughs> so i i had to go back and i had to lock in the hammy armor and what what was um what was fortunate, I guess, at this point was that it was able to go over top of that. Now, uh, you know, I wrestled with a lot of different ways to assemble these guys. Would I keep the hammy armor off? Would I keep it on? And ultimately, I just was like, you know what? I feel like I need to just lock it in there because it might not it might not go on afterwards after I locked the torso in. And the very first one I put together, I screwed up. So, you know, and it locked in. So good to go there, I guess. <laughs> um, then... You're gonna attach the arms, and the arms got this really unique kind of V joint kind of thing, like V is in Victor kind of joint thing. It's kind of prevents you from magnetizing them, which is unfortunate. Now, that being said, what I'm doing right here, if you're gonna glue your backpack on, you should glue your backpack on first because with these wires that you see going towards the back actually lock into the backpack. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint it separately. Um, that and the thunder shield or <laughs> the storm shield I'm gonna actually paint separately so I'm not assembling that at this point but I am putting the arms together and like I said they got that V is in Victor joint and it makes magnetizing a little difficult now I'm dry fitting everything here uh, so you can kind of see where everything you know this is real time like I didn't speed this up at all Alfie B and <laughs> um, this is real time so you can see that the glue the plastic glue is setting pretty quick like it's getting it's getting strong I'm just using a little bit I'm not blasting the plastic glue on there this one's gonna when, when you're doing something that's gonna actually have some force uh, some stresses placed on it like the thunder hammer going at that flat planer joint you're gonna want to dab it off to make it super tacky right off the bat kind of like what I just did off camera and then you see right there hey look got some good tension we're good to go. Yes, the bond is gonna cure over time with the plastic glue because it's molecular. But you know, for this tutorial, uh, I feel like it's it's the right it's the right way to go for me. 
Now, that being said, you can magnetize, if you wanted to go the axe route, you can magnetize the wrist right there at that planer joint that I just showed you where I glued the thunder hammer on. Um, I don't feel like it's the best route to go. I feel like it's extra work and I'm not sure if it would work out, but for those of you out there that want that modular capability between the thunder hammer and the storm shield, that might be the way to go, I feel like. Otherwise, you're just gonna have to pick a loadout, I feel like, with this kit. This kit is amazing, and that is the only detractor. It comes with all the parts. It comes with amazing poses. You don't even have to go with that Karate Kid pose. It comes with um, a different torso and a different leg set that'll let you uh, make that. Now we're gonna put on the shoulder pad armor, or I guess the Van Brace or Palderon, whatever you wanna call it there. I guess Van Brace is wrist or uh, lower arm. So uh, this one was actually, um, it was okay. It was easy to do for the most part. There's there's a round slot. It kind of locks in super easy. But then the problem is you kind of see that little talisman bit right there. And that goes on the, the nub at the crest right there in the chest of the armor plate. And you can see I'm very delicately putting it on. In one of the other takes I did of the lightning claw guy, and I'm not sure if I'm going to do a separate tutorial on him because this one went full time. I went, or this one went pretty long because I went the full time with it. But I feel like there was a lot of good material in here so I didn't want to fast forward it and get two out of it or you do two models so right there you can kind of see uh, where I, I use my fingers to do it but you could use a tweezers or um, you know an exacto blade or something like that and then the key the this is the one follow-up I had with all my models is um, the the heads don't seem to fit over that little talisman and I almost feel like I'm gonna go back and snap all those shoulder pads off and paint those separately. But the, the heads are actually have this really deep recess in them. So you can almost put them at the end of the ridiculously long neck and not have to worry about it. The last part here is the, the backpack uh, kind of assembly thing. And that, like I said, I left it off. Uh, because I wanted to paint it separately because it's got all sorts of, uh, of underhangs on it and when you're doing airbrushing um, You know that that sometimes is a better option for you So I, I realized at this point that I may have screwed up um, And it may not fit on there with those wires because the tolerances are so tight But it turns out it actually did it was just that one wire was just being a little uh, biatch and just kind of not um, Not untensioning itself. So I actually went back later and uh, after everything Thing had glued down and was able to, to pop it in and pop it out it's a little bit of effort and you want to be careful uh, that you don't snap those wires but it is 100% doable if you're gonna keep it off and attach it later I don't feel like uh, it is a problem at all so I left the thunder shield or excuse me the storm shield off because I am gonna paint that separate but you can see how it basically locks in there and you can get a really interesting angle with it because he's basically running at the camera you know um, so you can kind of um, almost have it so it's like down or it's almost like up like he's taking fire and he's kind of deflecting it kind of thing so they give you a few options there and the very last thing left to do is to basically put your little bead of glue on there and then lock it down on the 40 mil base remember these guys are on terminator size bases they don't have the girth but they definitely have the height so to speak so there he is all assembled without the storm shield and we're going to do something a little different here we're going to we're going to go into a little uh a little uh, kind of display gallery kind of thing here and I this is the first time doing this uh, doing a little ancient Chinese technique that I picked up that Kenny's probably gonna wanna uh, get from me yo dog yo dog I saw your video how'd you do that <laughs> so I'll have to I have to sh hit him up on that one there so um, I, I'm pretty happy with this uh, this little bit of footage here and we're gonna try to do this uh, in the future on all our videos so that's it for this one guys thanks for watching our assembly tutorial on the new space wolf 13th company Wolfen models. Deleted scenes, bonus content, all the interviews and post game wrap up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on the longward.net. Visit the longward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. The longward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.